you are listening to the Dragons of Real podcast. My name is Pete Jones. In this episode, I'm going to review Shadow of the Demon Lord by Robert Schwalb. And this was a request from Jason on the Audio Dungeon Discord for this review. So let's get into it. The background for Shadow of the Demon Lord is a grim, dark fantasy setting. Basically, the current empire has fallen and the uh, Demon Lord's shadow has touched the land, uh, which is results in demons and uh, uh, entering our world and the apocalypse and corruption spreading throughout it. So basically, the uh, it's a fantasy setting where the uh, end is coming and you are characters in that setting. And there's quite a lot of background fluff uh, in the book. Um, and it's a horror fantasy setting, uh, quite evocative. The core mechanic of this game is a D20. It's a D20 system where you add your stat modifier. And your stat modifiers comes from 10 minus your stat. So, for example, if your strength is 14, you're, you would get a plus 4 bonus to your using your strength. Similarly, if it's below 10, you'd have a minus 2 your roll. Your target number for 90-95% of all tasks is 10, so you're just trying to score 10 or more. However, if you're fighting an enemy, the target number would be the enemy's defence. Modifiers are han handled really simply in this game uh, by the way of boons or banes. Boons add a d6 to your d20 roll, banes subtract a d6 for your, for your roll, and boons and banes cancel each other out. If after adding boons and banes you have more than one or the other, you would roll a number of d6 and then take the highest number of that dice and either add it to the d20 or subtract it from the d20. The other thing in the system is that they've done away with uh, rolled initiative. Basically every turn is, is broken down into fast and slow turns. Uh, characters take their fast turn first and then all monsters take their fast turn then characters take the slow turn and monsters take the slow turn and so it goes on. A fast turn is just an action, a slow turn is a move and action. So it keeps it nice and simple and it moves the game on at a fast pace. Where Shadow of the Demon Lord really shines is character creation and character advancement. To create a character basically you choose an ancestry which is really a race and the choices you have are human, changeling, Clockwork, Dwarf, Goblin or Orc. And depending on which ancestry you choose, it sets your base attribute scores. Then you also choose a profession and this replaces a skill system. So your profession would give you boons uh, when attempting things that are in line with your profession. And then you roll on some tables uh, for general role play and background uh, information. All characters start at level zero. And when you finish your first adventure, you will become level one and you choose a novice path. And these paths are your classes. At level three, you would choose an expert path. And at level seven, you would choose a master path. There are four novice paths, magician, priest, rogue or warrior. And each one of those gives you different abilities and skills. There are 16 expert paths and your expert path also sets an objective. And there are 64 master paths. So you, there's lots of customization for your character as you level up. Magic in Shadow of the Demon Lord is a mixture of high and low magic. And what I mean by that is magic is not very common in the world, but what magic is available is very, very powerful. The paths you choose opens up different magic traditions to you. And there are magic traditions based on your in, on intellect or will, which is a bit like clerics and magicians. And uh, each tradition has a number of spells to choose from. The bestiary contains 50 plus pages of monsters. And what I like about uh, the bestiary is it gives you um, generic uh, creatures uh, which you can reskin yourselves. So, for example, on animals, you have a choice of huge, large, small or tiny animals. The same goes for demons. And the bestiary contains a mixture of traditional fantasy creatures and uh, some new horrific creatures that uh, have been created by Robert.
Each um, monster has a list of abilities and are well detailed and described with some nice pictures of them. What I also like about the uh, bestiary chapter is at the end of the chapter, it gives you full instructions on completing your own monsters from scratch. So that's very welcome. There is a very good GM section, which is good for both new and old GMs. It explains the role of a GM, gives tips on how to run adventures and create them, how to run campaigns, how to deal with exploration, um, how to assist players with creating characters and um, how to run a good combat. And uh, it provides a nice toolbox um, for GMs to dip into and take what they want from that. So uh, that's a big bonus. So what are my thoughts on the Shadows of the Demon Lord? One thing I really like is campaigns. Their campaigns are 11 separate scenarios which are tied together and you start at level zero on the first scenario and by the time you finish the 11th scenario you are level 10 and that's it. You often find with doing campaigns that they fizzle out. With this system you know you're playing 11 different sessions and in each session you're going to level up so it's achievable. It's an easy mechanical system and once you uh, uh, grok it it's very easy to run. The boons and banes make it nice and easy. The background is quite unique um, good fantasy horror, maybe not for everyone, but um, it reminds me a bit of uh, Warhammerish in that respect. But it is its own unique system, and the character path system is very clever. You start off with um, four paths, and then you've got quite a lot of uh, customization as you go up to the um, expert and master paths. So uh, uh, lots of choices there. If I've got one criticism of the system is as you s the characters level up, they gain an awful lot of abilities and feats. And it can be a problem for players to remember what they've got. As a GM, you've got no chance of remembering what your players have got. So it's a good idea at the beginning of every session to remind the players to review their abilities and their special skills because they're going to need them throughout the game. So all in all, a big thumbs up from me. And that was... Shadow of the Demon Lord, and thank you, Jason, for choosing that as my review subject. You have been listening to the Dragons Are Real podcast. My name is Pete Jones. You can follow me on my website at petejones.neocities.org or over my blog at dragonsarealpodcast.tumblr.com. I'm also very active on the OSR Anchorites on Audio Dungeon Discord. The opening music is from Kevin McLeod called Killers. The closing music, also by Kevin McLeod, is Fretless.